over 24,000 adults, people who ate more fatty, sugary foods, sugary drinks, and milk were more likely to have acne. So no, it's not just a teenage thing. High glycemic foods like white bread and sugary snacks can spike your insulin, which can ramp up oil production and inflammation. It's not necessarily about how much hormone you have, it's more about how your skin and your body reacts to those shifts. Oftentimes our environment can dictate how our body and our skin reacts to our hormonal changes. Are you tired of battling acne that just won't go away? Well, you're not alone, and it's probably not your fault. I'm Dr. Mina, a triple board certified dermatologist, and in the last 16 years, I've helped thousands of people get clearer skin, not just with prescriptions, but by identifying the real root causes of their breakouts. When it comes to acne, we know that genetics can play a huge role, but there are a few other reasons why we see acne in those past their teen years. So today we're diving into the biggest acne triggers, hormones, diet, environment, lifestyle, and how to start taking control. No vague advice here, I promise. Let's get into it. So let's start with hormones because for so many of us, this is where the acne journey begins. When androgen levels like testosterone go up, oil production spikes, that oil mixes with dead skin cells and bacteria that clogs your pores and hello, you get a breakout. That's why acne often flares during puberty and certain points in the menstrual cycle where differences in the hormone ratios occur. And in people too with PCOS, we see definitely difference in hormone ratios where you see more of those androgens. PCOS is polycystic ovary syndrome. But it's not necessarily about how much hormone you have, it's more about how your skin and your body react to those shifts. And oftentimes our environment can dictate how our body and our skin reacts to our hormonal changes, as well as the hormonal changes themselves. So let's define what these outside factors are. Let's talk about food first. Yes, it's a very controversial topic, but research does back this up. In one study with over 24,000 adults, people who ate more fatty, sugary foods, sugary drinks, and milk were more likely to have acne. So no, it's not just a teenage thing. High glycemic foods like white bread and sugary snacks can spike your insulin, which can ramp up oil production and inflammation. So in addition to high glycemic index slash sugary stuff, that study also mentioned milk. So dairy can contain hormones that can mess with your insulin levels as well. And some people are very sensitive to it. But here's what we don't really talk about enough, what you're not getting enough of, and that is fiber. Yep. I see a big difference in patients who get enough fiber in their diet. It can help regulate your blood sugar, it can support gut health, and it can lower just overall systemic inflammation. All things that support clearer skin. So it's not just about cutting things out, it's also about adding in the right foods in a way that's realistic and sustainable. Next up, your environment. So pollution, humidity, and even your skincare products can be a big deal and a huge contributor. There actually are certain airborne pollutants that can clog your pores and trigger inflammation. And some of those trendy skincare products, some of them can be full of pore clogging ingredients or what we call comedogenic ingredients. And those can sneakily make acne worse. Also, let's talk about environmental endocrine disruptors, a very controversial topic. So these are chemicals like pesticides, microplastics, even things like your yoga pants, like certain fabrics, certain preservatives and personal care products, they can subtly impact your hormone balance over time. So it's a good reminder that clear skin isn't just about what you put on your skin, it's also about what your skin is exposed to. Now let's get into stress, lifestyle, and habits that throw our skin off balance. So stress increases this hormone called cortisol, which throws off the way your body produces sebum. Cortisol does other things that are necessary, but it can also increase oil production. Interestingly, it can also reduce the good healthy oils and increase the kind of oil that's more likely to clog your pores. Long-term stress can also dysregulate your inflammatory signals, making skin even more reactive. And speaking of stress, other things I see linked to flare-ups, too much caffeine. Yes, coffee lovers, I said that, I'm sorry. So that, also too little sleep, and then drinking too much alcohol. These all impact hormones and inflammation in ways that can show up on your skin. And while I know that coffee is sacred, I do know that I really do think the caffeine piece is underrated when it comes to hormonal breakouts. Obviously, I think that in moderation, it's fine. It's like, I'm just thinking about the people who just drink it in excess, and it's like driving like stress in your body. 
So just something to keep in mind. Now let's talk about medications and supplements. Yes, those can absolutely play a role. Besides things like birth control, which we know can affect skin like one way or the other, there are things like steroids, testosterone, biotin, like certain supplements like B6, B12, and even whey protein. These have all been linked to acne flares. Actually, not so surprising about the whey protein because that's actually a form of dairy and we have seen higher rates of whey protein and body acne. So if you suddenly started breaking out and you've recently added one of these medications or supplements, just take note of that. Next is the gut. So let's talk about the gut skin connection because yes, your microbiome plays a huge role in acne. So your gut is home to trillions of microbes that help regulate inflammation, immunity, and even hormone metabolism. It does so much. When your gut is out of balance, something that we call dysbiosis, it can increase systemic inflammation and impair your skin's ability to heal, as well as your skin's ability to regulate oil. I've seen this time and time again with patients. If you're constantly bloated, irregular, or dealing with digestive issues and acne, those two could potentially be connected. So you wanna look at things that can support gut health, like eating more fiber. Again, a total game changer. You also wanna consider minimizing processed foods like processed oils, processed sugar, prioritize fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, or kefir. And then sometimes adding in like a well-formulated probiotic can be very helpful. So what's the takeaway? If you wanna calm inflammation and support your skin from the inside out, your gut is a powerful place to start. So how do we identify our triggers? So here's where you can get to be your own skin detective. Start tracking your diet, your cycle, your stress, your sleep, your products, even your environment. Like, are you working out more than usual? Are you doing stressful things? Are you in a toxic relationship? Write it all down in a skincare journal or like in your notes app. Over time, you'll start to spot patterns and that awareness is gold. It gives you power to understand what is going on in your life and how that could be affecting your body. Okay, so let's talk about other practical steps that you can do to help identify your triggers. One is starting by looking just simply at your skincare products. Look for non pore clogging ingredients. So the labels should say non-comedogenic or oil-free. If you're unsure, there are ingredient checkers out there. I really like this one from Personal Day. Focus on a skin-friendly diet, whole foods, more fiber, less sugar and dairy. You also wanna manage your stress like we talked about. So whatever that looks like for you, whether it's sleeping better, going for walks like the hot girl walk, doing therapy, meditating, practicing gratitude, hanging out with friends and loved ones. There's a lot of things you can do. I have dealt with so much freaking stress in my life and I feel like <laughs> it's, I've gotten to the point where like so many things don't even bother me at this point because you have to shift your perspective. When you shift the way you think about things and you focus on the good things in your life and you focus on the positive, I don't wanna like sound really hokey pokey, but like if you shift the way you look at something, certain things may not be as stressful as they seem. And it's important to not let your body react to something negatively as much as possible, because of course, all of that sends phys physical signals to your body. And then I know some people are gonna come at me about this. And like I said earlier, you wanna minimize your caffeine and alcohol intake. I think moderation is fine, but we are definitely seeing that definitely excess intake of those substances can lead to more problems and stress on the body. And then of course, you wanna work with a dermatologist. We can try to help you figure out your unique triggers and build a treatment plan that works. If this video helped you understand your acne triggers, connect the dots a little bit more, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more skin science and wellness. Drop a comment if there's a trigger you suspect is affecting you. I'd love to hear your story. I always wanna learn more because there's so many other things out there too. Also, like I probably didn't include everything. These are just top of mind, the things that I see most commonly in my practice. Also, if you're struggling with sleep, we know that's so important for acne and you wanna know how that ties into your skin, check out this video right here. It's all about the connection between sleep and skin repair. Thank you so much for watching and here's to clearer, calmer skin healing from the inside out. See you next time.